Mustafa Jenar joins me now from Istanbul. He's a research fellow at Sakarya University's Middle East Institute as well as the SETA Foundation. Mustafa, good to have you on the show. There's a lot of angles that I want to cover with you. Uh, let me start with this. I would have to assume that there, there would be some sort of skepticism on behalf of some U.S. officials that the release of these prisoners or the release of prisoners in general for frozen funds being released could fuel further hostage taking because it is widely believed that uh, this is a tactic that's pursued by the Iranians. Yes, uh, there are many critics uh, coming from the U.S. side and uh, especially some U.S. officials are suspect, uh, as a suspect, suspect to uh, towards uh, Iran will use this funds to fuel its uh, regional activities, which is perceived by the U.S. as terrorist activities and destabilizing activities in region. However, this deal is uh, delicately arranged as uh, Iran will not be able to use this uh, resources, these funds for its regional activities because there is a condition that uh, these unfrozen assets will be transferred to the Qatar National Bank and these are going to be used for only humanitarian purposes. So, uh, coming to other aspect of your question that uh, uh, this, can it be a blackmail strategy for Iran uh, actually, this kind of prisoner swaps uh, that we are um, uh, uh, experiencing, seeing that kind of swaps throughout uh, uh, 40 plus years since the uh, Iranian revolution. So this is not an unusual phenomenon for the U.S. and for also Iran. This is a this is a general phenomenon. Okay. Actually. Um, let's talk about the Biden administration's game plan. Do you feel that this deal could sort of increase the prospects for further diplomatic cooperation, including uh, what has been uh, a long-standing goal of Joe Biden and his administration, and that is the revival of the uh, the nuclear deal? Mm -hmm. So uh, the importance of this deal uh, it marks a, a positive step towards the escalation between Iran and the United States, and it surely will contribute to uh, easing uh, tension and may positively impact the potential uh, nuclear deal between two countries. And uh, furthermore, it also underscores the effectiveness of diplomacy uh, between these two countries. But can we expect a nuclear deal soon? Uh, can we link this, this prisoner swap to the nuclear negotiations? Actually, nuclear negotiations were uh, restarted in Vienna following the, the real, uh, following the election of uh, Joe Biden as the U.S. president. However, uh, the negotiations got stuck last year in Vienna, and I, I, actually, I, I think the very reason for that: both sides uh, were reluctant reluctant to reach a deal, but they uh, want to show. The, the 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 global public that they are not abandoning diplomacy and, and peaceful means to resolve the nuclear crisis. But we have been uh, hearing these negotiations which was going on in Uman uh, for months, and we have been expecting that kind of deal, and it uh, turned out that it's a prisoner swap. But I think that can be a starting point of a larger engagement uh, between the U.S. and Iran. And the U.S. has another goal. Uh, I think the U.S. wants to lessen uh, Russia's friends like, like Iran. And it's about the ongoing yeah. crisis in Ukraine. And, and Iran also has a balancing approach uh, towards uh, major powers, major global powers. So there are other issues which is going on uh, uh, in the in the backstage, right? Um, yeah, that's just one of many. Uh, Mustafa Jannar, thank you very much for joining us here on the News Hour. I do appreciate it. Thank you.